Hello, Heath the Carthiest here. I am uh, going to do a critique on Andy Weir, I think is his name, who wrote The Egg. It's a video on YouTube. If you haven't seen it, you might just stop this, go watch it, and then come back to this because I'm going to be doing a quick review critique on it. Uh, one of our ex garage informants, uh, Jake uh, the Philosopher, or Jacob the Philosopher, uh, he uh, kind of keyed us in on this video and said, hey, it'd be interesting to have a review and critique from on it from a Christian perspective. And uh, the re so, so why critique a narrative that is a fiction? Uh, well, because today, in today's day and age, uh, most uh, philosophy, uh, most um, uh, belief systems, uh, and, and really the, the, the things that are... are uh, Teachings that present themselves as truths uh, in terms of ultimate reality and why we're here and where we're going, etc., is done through cinema, through video, through uh, mediums of this fashion. And so uh, this story is clearly something that is embedding a philosophy into it in order that um, uh, just to entertain the ideas, maybe. I, I don't know the intention of, the, the, of Andy Weir. But what we do know is that whatever his, what, whatever his intention was, we do know that there's clearly an ethical uh, uh, drive to this. It's really, the if, if we might try to get the authorial intent, is to really provide humanity with a, 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 a real a sense of why we ought to live uh, and, fl and flourish and, and love our neighbor. Um, so, with that said, um, I'll just get into the narrative and, and, uh, and give a little quick critique. Um, so, um, one thing to note before we do, uh, Jake the Snake had uh, looked up a little bit on Andy Weir, and, and Andy Weir wrote The Martian, and Jake has read that, uh, but he said a uh, fun little quote, he says, he thinks that Andy Weir might be the next Ron Hubbard. Uh, Ron Hubbard's the one who uh, started Scientology, uh, who was both into uh, science and, and type uh, uh, spheres of thought, just spending a lot of time in, in scientific um, uh, study or, or computer science, things like that. Fascinated, I think, Ron Hubbard, but this has also been an area for Andy Weir, and Andy Weir is also into fiction. So anyway, some, some connections there. Um, uh, all, just for fun, really. Uh, <laughs> uh, with that said, the narrative is really about two individuals, and they uh, one is a god, uh, who belongs to a, 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 a it's, it's really polytheistic because there's many gods, an infinite regress of gods, and this is one god who creates the universe. And it turns out that the universe was created for one individual uh, spirit child or divine child, if you will, as the language is used at the end of the narrative. And that, um, so, so God creates all the universe for this one child, and uh, but the, but the child doesn't know this, doesn't recognize this, because he hasn't been outside of finite existence long enough. So the child at the beginning of the narrative dies. He, he's actually just like one of us, a human being, dies, goes to the other side, if, and, and, and meets a god, i.e. his god, this, this one god who created the universe. Um, and he, he asks, you know, what happened? Where am I? And, uh, and a god says you died uh, matter of factly and uh, he got hit by a truck anywhere anyway it goes on and um it's just him and nothingness so the man nothingness and god and so right away we notice the eastern uh, uh philosophy here and eastern religion here is that the idea of nirvana is that on the other side of this life is really nothing it's just consciousness and uh, a divine consciousness, uh, and, and actually and Nirvana might be best, or at least uh, to my knowledge, best defined as a state of consciousness that is extrapolated or, or no, no longer bound by any particulars of this universe, of this world, no, no, no uh, nothing that happened in this life. You're, you're no longer weighed down by or has any bearing on your thought, but rather you're just completely conscious of your own consciousness. Uh, you're self-aware, if you will. So that's really also the, one of the major themes throughout this entire narrative is this self-absorption. In fact, when it concludes, it really comes down to loving one's self. Uh, and, uh, but it does this in, in a strange fashion. We'll, we'll get in that in, in, a, in a little bit here. Um, but going back up to this, so it takes on this nothingness, but divinity, 
or a god and this this uh, child god. So this turns out that this 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 man who is now on the other side finds out later in the narrative that he's actually one of this this god's child now. So this the the the, the father god, if you will, bears this or or mother god, whatever you, whatever you like there, uh, has this child and is raising up this child through the physical world. And so the physical world turns out to be like the egg. It's an egg. It's a place of developing the God child. Um, but, but going back to the point is, is that this is quite a bit different than Nirvana though, uh, or that in, in, in one sense it's taking some of those ideas, but in the other sense it's not because he's up with God talking about the particulars of the world, talking about experiences, talking about hurting, having been uh, through pain and uh, in loving others, uh, we'll get to that in a second. But talking about all the experiences in life, um, this child has had. They talk about that up on the on the other side, in the timeless, spaceless side, which would not be the case with uh, Eastern Nirvana. It kind of um, grabs. Uh, it's different in that sense. Um, so, so yeah, we'll continue on. Let's skip. There's just there's a lot to to be said. Um, so, so one thing that happens is is the man, the the child, if you will. I think maybe I'll I'll call a man or man or the God child or the divine child. I'll, I'll call him all kinds of things. Uh, so he he's, he goes to uh, he asks his God. Um, he says, "So do do I go to heaven or hell or something?" And God says, "Neither. You will be reincarnated." Um, and then the man says, "So the Hindus were right." And then God says, "All religions are right in their own way." Um, this is funny because by God saying, uh, neither, you won't go to heaven or hell, but you'll be reincarnated. And then to go on to say all religions are right in their own way is uh, false. Uh, it, it just, that just is. It's, it's a fun thought to think that everyone's right in their own way, but the fact is, is you're not everyone's right. Uh, uh, and objectively, you know, everyone can be right in their own mind, uh, but it doesn't mean that that's actually true. Uh, you could say you're right about something, uh, two plus two equals nine. I can believe that's right, but the fact is that it remains wrong. Um, truth is objective. Uh, with, with, with that said, uh, yeah, so if you believe in reincarnation, as this God is, this narrative is holding, it, then it, that means if you believe in uh, cessation, or, uh, or um, uh, maybe a better word would be um, uh, uh, annihilationism. So you, you, you just cease to exist upon death. Well, that would be out of the question to this narrative, and therefore that those people are not right in their own way or in any way any true sense of the way. Uh, those who believe in the resurrection, that's Christians, we would be absolutely cut off at this point um, because that reincarnation is right. Again, this is an Eastern idea. Um, so again, that's just a faulty narrative that we hear a lot in this day and age is that everyone is right. That's not true. By that statement, it makes every, many people wrong because many people don't believe that everyone is right. Uh, it's self-contradictory. Um, yeah, so yeah, Christians believe that it's appointed for man to die once and then the judgment. Unless Christ returns before we die, we will all die and we will await the judgment. And that's why it's really important in, in, in terms of not buying into this type of belief where you get these multiple opportunities to grow. Not only that, but this individual doesn't even get doesn't even have to deal really with his with his sin because what we find out later in the narrative is that he actually is everybody. This one divine child is everybody's uh is everyone that he's that the reincarnation of him is every single human being who has ever lived that's him just getting reincarnated constantly and at the same time um uh and multiple bodies and so um uh, yeah that's i don't know where i was going with that but uh uh that's fun stuff um and so oh yeah that was it that, that there's these multiple opportunities for this person this divine child to grow and uh, there's no true judgment. There's no true justice. There's no real uh, need for reconciliation uh, or or um, forgiveness before God and, and, and one another. In fact, there is no we or I-thou relationships. It's just I uh, and me. Uh, because what we find out later in the narrative is that this one divine child is everybody. Uh, it's his spirit, his being inside each human being, and that are actually the physicality of humanity is merely a shell that will be ultimately done away with as this, sp this spirit divine child has finally experienced all of life through all these different bodies, uh, or 
social constructs and, and, and societies and different ages and different periods of life, through all these experiences, he will finally, or she, he, it, will finally have grown to be the fullness of divinity in terms of its intellect and knowledge and um, experiences. Um, let's just continue on here. Uh, yeah, what ends up happening is that it appears the driving force of this whole narrative is to really give humanity or the viewers a place and sense of a, an ethical basis for how to live well. It's basically taking the biblical command to love your neighbor as yourself and reworking it with Eastern philosophy, with uh, reincarnation and, uh, and, and, and divinity, making us equal with God. This, this individual, this man, is actually God's child in the sense that it's univocally God, that God actually begot this creature from his own essence. And so you have this God that is now growing in his divinity, which in itself is contradictory. God does not grow. Uh, God is absolute. He is absolute personhood. Uh, uh, to change would be to be something less than God in, in, at any moment. Anyway, that's what, so that falls apart. But anyway, this divine thing is growing and um, is through these experiences that it grows. And again, I lost my thought. I am tired. Uh, and, but the, the whole narrative is that he would grow to love his neighbor as himself. Um, and this is clearly seen in the later part of the whole narrative uh, where, where man says, I am every human who ever lived, question. And a God says, or will ever live, yes. And the man says, I am Abraham Lincoln. God says, you, and you're John Wilkes Booth too. And he, the man says, I am Hitler. And God says, and you're, um, and you're the millions who he killed. And the man says, I'm Jesus. And God says, and you are everyone who followed him. Every time you victimize someone, you were victimizing yourself. Every act of kindness you've done, you've uh, kindness you done, you've done to yourself. Every happy and sad moment ever experienced by any human was and will be experienced by you. Um, yeah, yeah, that's that's fun. Again, so that whole narrative of really implicitly, but yet explicit through this language is that. It's, it's really trying to find a basis to love your neighbor and it's saying that you are your neighbor. Uh, this actually takes, draws a lot from Jesus' words where he says in scripture, Jesus says in Matthew 25, 40, truly I say to you, as far as you've done, did this or done this to the least of these, you have done to me. Um, uh, but it's not to say that Jesus is the least of these people and, and people that are around you, uh, basically saying, however you treat people, no matter who they are of stature or or class, uh, you've done to Jesus, the very word in, uh, God incarnate. Uh, God uh, is his, all things are his, and you, um, uh, but, but it's not collapsing the distinction between God and the creature, um, and, uh, but this, this narrative does that, so this child is God, and he's his own neighbor, uh, and, and I think that's the fascinating thing to this whole narrative, is that, um, not only does it kind of plagiarize the love your neighbor as yourself and, and puts it into um, into different language, really, um, if I can call it plagiarism, I, I, he's not quoting the scripture, um, but he's taking that ethic. Uh, it, it really is, in the sum of it, um, there's no metaphysical we. Uh, when this person, this being, is loving his neighbor, he's loving himself, again, he is uh, everyone, Hitler, Jesus, the followers, that's the whole point, right? Therefore, he should love everyone, but at the end of the day, that would be loving himself, his wife, his children, that was himself, his own spirit is the essential part of those so-called people, uh, and this falls into monism, which again is uh, the pantheism, uh, and, and if you know, it falls apart, it, there's no true distinction of personhood in this life, um, and it confuses the cre creator with the creation. 
that God creates, he is wholly other. He is separate. He stood before all things. Therefore, he's not, he's not uh, um, conditioned by things. He's, and, and so that's, that's one where it, thought, it falls apart. This is a very lonely universe, according to this narrative. It's, it's just, instead of I, thou, it's just I and only I. You know, it's, it's um, the, uh, instead of it's love neighbor as yourself, it's love neighbor because it is yourself. Uh, so it's a distortion of that, and it's a sad distortion because it actually doesn't really recognize people as other people. Uh, it's a deep-seated narcissism, really, at the end of the day, this narrative. Um, and, and I think a fallen humanity, our fallenness, likes the idea of just being able to escape our wrongs to others and not have to justify, be, be uh, taking an account for that. Um, because at the end of the day, the whole narrative is that the child is always growing, just growing up. Hitler, he was just growing up, uh, uh, all the millions that were involved there, um, and, and this goes throughout all of history, all the, all the wrongs and all the, the torturous and, and inhumane things that have been done, they're just a part of growing up. Uh, there's not going to be a, a judgment to come for humanity, uh, and, and, and there is no humanity, it's just, again, one, one divine child. Uh, what else would I want to say to this? Uh, maybe I'll just read a little thing here I got here. This, yeah, deep-seated narcissism that fallen humanity enjoys entertaining because it conforms or confirms our autonomy and arrogance, deifying the self such that all there is is the self. Uh, 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 and, and love for self, giving to self, and all wrongs are merely a growing up and not an offense against God and uh, one another. Uh, there's no actual other person. There's no one actually creating the image of God that you're 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 actually dishonoring God by by uh, um, hurting them, um, and 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 again, there's no no room for grace, no room for true forgiveness. Um, yeah, I can go on and on and on. Anyway, that's the whole thing. Maybe a, a fun, fascinating point would be that uh, because, and maybe I re reiterate this. Uh, because the child is divine, and also when he's incarnated into, uh, reincarnated into a body, by loving that uh, other, he is both fulfilling the command to love God and neighbor. You, so it's com fulfilling the two commands that scripture speaks to. Love God, love neighbor. That's the full uh, weight of what it means to be fully human is being in that right relationship with God and a right relationship with neighbor and what this narrative does is it tweaks and distorts those two commands and and is is saying that life is about this one being who grows and matures by learning to really through all his experiences but ultimately the importance of loving another uh, and in that one event because he, the divine child is the other person and the divine child is divine, he is both loving God and neighbor. Uh, I found that fascinating, although I don't think Andy Weir uh, thought that through, or thought about that as he wrote it. I don't think he saw both commands being fulfilled in the one act of love from this God child uh, when he loves another human. Uh, again, loving himself. So anyway, it's, it's, it's narcissism at its finest. It's, it's this lonely world at, at best. And uh, all the wrongs and hurts that have ever been done in this life uh, are nothing more than a growing up. So uh, I think, again, something like this needs to be weighed in light of reality. And it, it does no justice to, to, the, to sin. Uh, it does no justice to um, uh, the need for redemption, uh, reconciliation with God. Uh, rather than God pulling us through terrible, heinous things, uh, Christianity has a God that's redeeming us from all things and that that um, all sin is a result of us going astray, going about life our own way, and God allowing us to do so and reaping the benefits of that, which is not beneficial. <laughs> it's brokenness. It's, it's, it's disharmony. It's, it's sad. Uh, and uh, But God is working to redeem all things, revealing his, his glory, revealing his goodness, revealing his mercy toward all. The fact that he allows... Us to transgress and live on this earth shows how deep his mercy is that that giving us time that we would repent and trust in his son and be redeemed. Um, uh, that, yeah. 
Hope this was helpful, just as a re little reflection on the egg by Andy Weir. Uh, I know it wasn't real concise. Um, yeah, I, I could spend more time on it to make it concise and to the point, but I treated this more like a little walkthrough dialogue. Uh, again, hope it was beneficial. Uh, X Garage, check us out. We got some videos coming out soon. Uh, if you haven't checked out our series on the Jehovah's Witnesses, well, you haven't, but it's 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 on its way out. So uh, uh, it should be out soon. Maybe you'll watch this video in a couple months from now and it will be out. Hmm. Uh, yeah, kind of going back to what this, this whole thing's about. You don't know which reality you're in or what time you're in what reality if this is reality. Anyway, uh, yeah, hope you enjoyed.